Joining us now on This Is The Day is actress, producer, writer Siobhan Fallon Hogan, and she's here to talk about her latest film, Shelter in Solitude. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Um, let's dive right in. Uh, maybe talk about the movie a little bit. You have a kind of fledgling country singer and her relationship with a death row inmate. Where, where did you get, get the story from? What inspired you to write this? Well, it's crazy. My first film, Rushed, came out in 2021. And it was about a fraternity hazing incident. It was a thriller. And just as we were finishing the edit during COVID, I thought, I definitely need a break. And I was lying in bed. And I, this idea came to me. And it sort of comes from all different places. Because my father, um, Bill Fallon, he's passed away a, lo a long time ago. But he was an attorney. And I'm one of five kids. And he used to talk about, at the dinner table, his, some of his clients who were in prison. And I was kind of, and he would talk about like, you know, conjugal visits and, you know, how horrible it was and that kind of thing. And then he also had clients that were prison guards. And so I was really kind of obsessed. And I grew up in upstate New York, where I am right now, actually. And we filmed the film Shelter in Solitude, my new film, in upstate. And there's the Jamesville Penitentiary. And as kids, I had cousins that lived out that way. Oh, wow. And so I would go by there and I think, what are they doing in there? So I was sort of obsessed that way. Yeah. And then my dad also wanted me to be a country singer. So I I did too, but I never had enough voice. But um, so I was I've been an actress for 35 years. And when my youngest daughter, my youngest of three, went off to college, I thought, I'll give my a shot at writing films because I should know how to do it, but I've done it better enough. And anyway, so Rush was my first film, and then my second film. Shelter and Solitude, it came to me in the middle of the night, and I feel like it was definitely a miracle. Wow, yeah. And there's, and there's so many layers that are going on in the movie, too. There, there's a lot of characters that are dealing with a, a, a lot of issues, but there, there's goodness in them as well. Maybe you could talk about that and how everybody's kind yes. of dealing with their own things. Well, oddly, um, you know, you told me you're in Boston. So we were at the Boston International Film Festival in April, and we won Best Actress and Best Cinematography. So oh, great. people ask me questions about Rushed. Uh, my first movie, you know, people can get it on Amazon. Now it was all <laughs> kinds of theaters. But there's always these Catholic themes running through because I'm a Catholic. I raised my kids Catholic. And I have, feel I have a responsibility to, um, you know, kind of spread the word through filmmaking. So I, uh, there's three sort of themes going on. There's three broken people. Me, I play a country singer, wannabe, heavy on the wannabe. <laughs> and she's kind of an egomaniac and she's sort of a cougar wannabe, but no one will have her. So she's kind of this broken woman, corrupt, you know, not, not, she doesn't have bad morals, but she would if she could until she's turned around by meeting this death row prisoner. And she brings him Bible passages because the, the story takes place in Tennessee in the, in the real outskirts. And so she says, you know, I have born again Christians and, you know, they know the Bible a lot better than us Catholics. And then when he wants nothing to do to me, I say, that's okay. We don't, I don't really read the Bible that much anyway. So, and then I have my brother who plays the warden, who's Robert Patrick from The Terminator, who also played my husband in Rushed. So we have the same cast, except for Peter Macon, who's this fabulous actor who yeah, plays yeah. the death row prisoner. So it's sort of broken people. But people always ask me, why is the movie, your movie's also really funny? Because here you have this crazy, sad story in Shelter and Solitude about a death row prisoner with 10 days left to live. And why are there really funny parts of it? Because I believe that and as goes on in the world, that really horrible things happen to funny people yeah. and how to deal with it. And you know, you, you could be in the most tragic circumstances and you suddenly find yourself laughing for some reason because you're like, that, that's how you deal. Yeah, yeah. But you're also very serious too. And it's very, and then there's this real uncomfortableness to a person who is used to being funny, then thrust into something where they're crying and they're not really people that are comfortable crying. They're used to being tough. Yeah, and you, and you mentioned too that you know Val, the character Val that you play, uh, very faithful in terms of you know she's praying in the morning, praying at night too. And I, I wanted to ask, wine. <laughs> yes, and I wanted to ask you uh, how has faith kind of shaped your work throughout your career as an actress, writer, producer? You know, um, I had a feeling you would ask that. <laughs> so you know, here's the deal. I, I I thought last night. You know, I'm not really good with analogies, but I thought. It's almost like saying, how does an orange make orange juice? When you squeeze it, all this juice comes out. Well, like, if you're talking to me, like, I'm raised Catholic. 
my kids or I raised my kids Catholic. I'm in a rosary group. I try to go to daily mass as much as possible. I'm not saying, I'm, by the way, I'm just like Val. I'm not a good person. Yeah. <laughs> it's just that I know that's the right thing to do, but I screw up a lot. Yeah. And so does Val. So Robert Patrick, my good friend, you know, as I said, he plays my, my brother in this and he played my husband in Rush. He said to me, Siobhan, you know, I always wanted to do like a faith filled movie. And he said, but a lot of times they're kind of icky and the people you can't relate to because they're so good. Yeah. You're like, I feel like that person. Well, my character, Val, first of all, she's an egomaniac. And if you look at her bar, she has pictures of herself <laughs> everywhere from 1996. <laughs> she's like, I don't like to age. And I sang once in Nashville in 1996. And um, so she's very flawed. And she realizes with COVID, she's like drinking too much wine. And she's like, I better get a job because I don't want to be a wine now. You know, and and she's and she's look at she's the type of girl, you know, like a lot of people say to single women, why didn't you ever get married? Well, she's like, and I have a line in it. And the prisoner says to me, why didn't you ever marry? And she said, my daddy told me I had too much unearned effervescence. No one, and you know, because she was almost a little too much. Yeah, yeah. So you take this, it's this juxtaposition of a woman work who's crazy funny and a singer and like a kind of a wild one, then being in a prison and she has to be serious with a guy. It's a very horrible situation, has 10 days left to live. And then he sort of becomes the voice of reason. Yeah, yeah. Which isn't too hard with her. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, going back. So I, I listen, I um, Catholicism is is in my bones. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And so that's naturally going to come out when I write. Yeah, yeah. And so let people know, uh, Shelter and Solitude, when's it yes. come out? Where can people oh. go see so it? So this is crazy. So we are an independent film. It, there's no money from studios. I have the right to, to um, promote it from SAG because I raised all the money myself. We, I started calling around to theaters in July. One by one, they're like, yes, independence. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So I was like, well, the, what the heck? I might as well call the big chains. So I called AMC and they were kind of like, yeah, fat chance, old lady, <laughs> old fat Catholic with the big red head. So long of the short, I send them the movie and they write, we love the movie. We want to pick it up for a wide release. So I was like, well, you don't say. The oldest trick in the book. So I then go to Regal and Regal says yes. So the movie will be all over the country on October 6th. Okay. It'll be in AMCs and Regals, but the tickets will go on sale for AMC, Regal, and many, many other chains, Harkins, Marcus, Studio Movie Grill, Alamo, on September 12th. So if people want to get them in advance, that's when you do it. And by the way, there's fabulous music in it. Yeah. Because my son, Peter, who plays Chris, the, um, the, the cop in it, and my daughter, Sinead, plays Layla the Hippie. We're all in it. My husband produces with me, my husband, Peter. Um, he took me to Nashville, and he found these amazing singers. So country fans, uh, Justin Bill Tonin from Three Doors Down, he wrote a song for the movie that I sing and recorded in Nashville. It's my dream came through. Yeah. My, father, my father's dream. And then... Todd Cameron wrote, but we also have two rappers in it who played roles in the trailer park, Fat Nick and Rob Banks. We've got this eclectic, fabulous, I don't even know what to say, mix of people. And the movie works fabulously. Yeah. If you see what people wrote on IMDb from Boston, you know, they're like, it makes you laugh, scream laughing and scream crying. Yes. So yeah. long and short of it is AMC Regal, October 6th, every other theater to all over the country. Honolulu to Arkansas. There you go. Shelter and solitude. Thanks so much, Siobhan, for being with us. Thank you. And people can follow up on me at Siobhan Fallon Hogan on Instagram or at Shelter and Solitude on Facebook or Twitter. And I can't believe I said that because I'm a dinosaur. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you Check so much, out. Kevin. No, no, great talking to you, Siobhan. Thanks God so bless. much. Let's go Thank back you. now to the rest of This is the Day.